Hey guys, Garrett again. Um, here with another, yeah, you guessed it, injector pump video. I'm making two today. I uh, just finished up the fuel shutoff lever um, an assembly video a few minutes ago. And because I'm continuing on working on this pump, and this is not something I get to do every day, I figured I'd go ahead and make a, another video on uh, the rest of what I was doing today. So uh, this is the pump I showed you in the last video. This is going to a friend of mine. Um, what I'm doing is replacing the packings. Now, if you have a deuce and a half or any other piece of equipment or vehicle that is outfitted with an American Bosch PSB 6A pump, you, you may know that they have a habit of leaking oil from three general areas. Uh, the first one is the uh, fuel shutoff assembly, uh, which I addressed in the last video. So we've already covered that. So the next things I want to cover is the other two packings that have a habit of leaking and those are located here on the pump and here on the pump. Now they're just nitrile o-rings. Um, they're referred to as packings in the nomenclature um, but they're just o-rings. So um, you may know that o-rings over years and years of uh, heat and oil exposure they uh, flatten out and they harden up and that's what causes them to leak. Well, as you can see here this one is nicely flattened and uh, this was on the front of the pump now if you look down here let's see if I can focus there's a groove here and that groove is what the o-ring sits in um, you've got the same thing here and I'll show you on this parts pump it sits in a nice o-ring groove but once the o-ring flattens out and there's no longer any pressure exerted against both sealing surfaces from the o-ring they tend to leak and it's a lot of work to take this all apart when it's on the truck leaking again because you've got to remove the pump from the truck um, if you want to do it right and not mess anything up so I'm doing it now um, the packings for this you can get them separately you could probably even uh, match some up out of an o-ring kit or uh, a a hydraulic shop or something um, but as I showed you in the last video I've got the AMBAC uh, pump gasket and seal set so oh, let's see these are some of the packings I said that's an old one yeah that's an old hydraulic head o-ring um, there's an extra hydraulic head o-ring which there is a another full set it came with here not sure why it came with an extra that actually that might be for something else in there um, and these are the two uh, pump uh, body seal packings or however you want to refer to it they go once again here in this groove and here in this space between the advanced assembly and the main pump body um, now I was actually making this very same video earlier and my battery died so I had to start over uh, because I don't have editing software so um, I had removed this 9 16 bolt here. Um, there's only two bolts that you have to take out if you've already got the pump off the truck and that's this bolt. And if you go around to the other side, this bolt. And the reason for that is because the bottom 9 16 bolt actually goes all the way through the advanced assembly housing and into the, uh, the timing uh, timing cover adapter plate there so before you pull it off what you want to do is make sure you've got everything um, timed right and got the uh, pressure off of the gear set in here uh, because as you know this hydraulic head is spring loaded and it pushes down on a tappet in there which turns all the other shit in there and if you've got spring pressure on it and go pull this apart shit flies apart so there are three springs in here which stand up which is why i've got it in the vise like this and it's only in there gently and if you look it's not holding it by the gear adapter wheel it's actually just on the lip there uh, of the advanced assembly body now what i've done is i've still got uh can you see it yeah you see the scribed mark there on the gear? That's the hydraulic head drive gear. That is still 
lined up with the pointer in there in the case there you can see it now because I haven't moved it since I changed the hydraulic coat o-rings now I've shown you this on another video on a different pump uh, actually it may have been this pump this has been around for a while waiting for me to get to it um, but when you've got that mark time uh, timing mark lined up for the hydraulic head and you've got your advanced assembly timing mark window removed cover removed you can look in here or can you this may not work I'm doing my best to show you guys but you can see the pointer there and you can see the mark there you see they're not necessarily lined up but the important thing is that you can see the mark in the window now you cannot really well I mean you could if you tried you can get that out of time but you can't uh, and the reason for that is because the adapter gear has a master tooth on it that's larger than the rest you see right there so you could get it oh, I don't know 180 degrees out of time but even then I'm not positive that that just being the advanced assembly 180 degrees out wouldn't make a difference because it's just a set of flyweights and springs that open up so um, that may or may not make a difference I, I don't know honestly um, I don't know everything I try to some people may think I do but honestly I don't um, anyway moving on so the reason I have this standing up as I told you before is because I've got those three springs standing up in there and when I pull this off I don't want the springs going everywhere now, now they shouldn't be under a lot of tension right now they are just um, under the tension of the uh, two halves that are bolted together um, but if you have the pump laying on its side, then when you pull it apart, all of it falls out. So you stand it up like this, and this is even what the TM will tell you, is to put it in a, a stand, which they have a, a fixture to hold it, um, but I don't have it. And stand it up like this. Uh, then it's, honestly, I don't even know why I'm bothering to show you this, because I know this is just gonna be a pain in the ass trying to do this with one hand and uh, really it's just unbolting this and lifting it off replacing the o-ring and setting it back on and making sure the springs go in the pockets which they're assigned to and to that end these are the spring end pockets there's three of them so when you set the main pump body back down on your advanced assembly you've got to make sure that those three springs go in that they, they don't fall over when you're putting it together. Uh, what I do with that is I'll take the springs out and dip them in some grease and set them back down in the advance assembly. That way the grease keeps them stuck where they're supposed to be and standing up so if you just barely touch them they don't fall over. And uh, as soon as hot motor oil hits it, it dissolves the grease and so it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, so let me see if I can lift this off of here without too much issue and show you what I'm talking about before I turn this off um, oh yeah don't forget to disconnect your oil line too and you can disconnect it from either end it doesn't matter but um, don't forget it so yep I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand Okay, there we go. Oh, the thrust collar fell out. Sweet, and it rolled under the bench. Oh, and one of the springs fell over, but it did not fall out. So, this is what I'm talking about. If you take just this end of the spring, and you dip it in some, like, red axle grease, um, and you just set it back in here, like that, then when you're putting everything back together, it won't just flop over like that. Uh, if you do flop over a spring and you don't notice it when you start this thing up it's going to destroy the advanced assembly so 
um, once you get it back together, uh, you know, look in through your window and you can, you should be able to see two of the springs through the window with it assembled. And then you can rotate it to take a look at the third by hand and then rotate it back because you want to retain the same timing that you had before when you pulled it off of the engine. Uh, the thrust collar, I've shown that in another video, it's just a little metal spacer ring about an eighth of an inch thick that goes on this shaft and slides up in this cavity in this gear. And what that does is it keeps this whole um, flyweight assembly from walking back and forth and changing your, your timing while it's running. So, um, guys, if you found this video helpful, uh, please hit the little like button down below. Uh, it helps me out. Uh, if you haven't already, and if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you'd share the video to the, the pages and the people that matter to you. Every little bit that you can do helps me out. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Thank you.